Osaka Castle. A symbol of the city is lit up against the night sky. It's 8 p.m. in Osaka. Welcome to a special edition of Newsroom Tokyo. I'm Shobe Pu. And I'm Aki Shibuya. Today we're reporting from Osaka, the biggest city in Western Japan. We are joined now by two academics from Osaka University. Yukari Enoi is an associate professor and an expert on the sociology of education. Steve Muller teaches communication through drama and role play. Welcome, both of you. Thank you very much. Well, Steve, <laughs> you're from the UK, and uh, right. where you lived and traveled to many other countries mm -hmm. and also many other cities. But what do you think makes Osaka so unique compared to other cities in the world? Well, you know, when I first moved to Osaka, there was a kind of small culture shock hmm. because I had thought that the Japanese were maybe very similar to the British, shy and, you know, not so forthcoming with making friendships and that kind of thing. But I discovered that in Osaka, people were very friendly. In fact, it reminded me very much of um, when I went to Spain mm. and um, I experienced a huge culture shock in Madrid when the Spanish people were bright and big and ebullient. And I came to Osaka and I got that same feeling and it was really wonderful. It's the reason why I've stayed here for so long. I came here originally just for uh, just three month contract and ended up staying here for 17 years. So wow. it's certainly very attractive. Well, Yukari, you're yeah. originally from Yokohama yes. near Tokyo. Yes. Do you see, feel that there's something about Osaka that's different from other cities in Japan? I also have a uh, uh, similar exp experience that uh, when my bag was open and a uh, completely stranger came and uh, be careful, your bag is open. <laughs> it's never happened in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And also, you carry maybe something is also different uh, here in Osaka. Well, mm -hmm. people don't hesitate yes. to talk about uh, money. Um, <laughs> but, um, well, of course, it depends, but generally speaking. But do you think this, well, this attitude explains this entrepreneurial spirit in, in this town, in the city. Yeah, Osaka is more like pioneer than the guardian of traditions. People's curiosity creates new things. It's often said that local merchants have the reputation of being self-centered. Mm -hmm. They tend to get carried away and excited and do things immediately. But that is what makes them unique. It is their positive attitude mixed with a down-to-earth sense of humor that has contributed to their ability to create various things that have become famous worldwide. So Steve, I'm curious, what do people in your country think of things made in Japan? Do you know what? They love things made in Japan. <laughs> I mean, it's got a really good reputation. Um, as I say, when I first came here, I was with a group of actors, actually. That was in 1993, just for a couple of months, and nobody wanted to eat the food. It was just really strange for them. But now you can find it everywhere. The conveyor belt sushi, mm -hmm. which I discovered recently, was made not only in Japan, but made right here in Osaka. And I've discovered that many of the things which say made in Japan were actually made here in Osaka, which gives Osaka that reputation worldwide for quality, craftsmanship, and it keeps alive that tradition of the merchants of Osaka, which is fantastic and makes me very proud that I'm here in Kansai and living amongst the Osakan people who, as um, Yukari-san said, are just warm, lovely, vibrant. Well, please stay with us. We'll talk more later. Thank you. Thank you. What strikes me is seeing people's, well, struggles to, like, transform differences or diversities and create a new value or make it a new kind of richness. But, um, well, Steve, do you think that this diversity, this historical diversity mm -hmm. in Osaka, is helping to create this atmosphere of the city that, that is welcoming to foreigners? Yes, I think um, that this city is welcoming to foreigners because if we kept mentioning throughout the program, it is a city of merchants. That's what it's famous for. And if you want to sell something, you better be able to communicate. And so I think it's in their DNA, their blood, to be able to communicate with whomever. Because in the end, that's what makes for a good sales relationship. That's what makes for a good relationship with people that they come back to their, the shop that you're selling things in or whatever it might be. And I think the Osakan people have developed that ability to communicate with 
anybody, despite language barriers or whatever might be there to um, prevent any kind of communication. So I certainly feel that as someone who has lived here for a long time and not necessarily very good at Japanese, but find that the Osakan people just bend over backwards to communicate with me. And that gives me such a thrill and a joy. And I think it's because of that, as I said, in deeply inbred ability to be able to sell themselves. But uh, Yukari, even in a city with such a tradition of openness, there still are ethnic and cultural barriers. Yeah, uh, people often talk about legal barriers, language barriers, and emotional barriers. I believe that it needs the government's involvement to eliminate legal barriers and hurdles. But when it comes to language and emotional barriers, Osaka has worked hard to eliminate then throughout its history, the fact many ethnic Koreans live here itself is proof that Osaka has nurtured its unique wisdom in order to live in harmony with other ethnic groups. Uh, Steve, uh, very briefly before <laughs> sure. we go, but do you think, uh, what's the prospect for, for the change that could happen in Osaka? Well, you know, when I first arrived here, I remember meeting a couple of friends who I thought were Japanese. And then they privately said to me, actually, Steve, we're, we're Korean, but please don't tell anybody. And I was really shocked. And then I found out that I, who was being treated so well as a white male British citizen, um, I was shocked to discover that other Asians were not treated as well as I was treated. However, over the last 15 or so years, I have seen a change in that attitude. And the Japanese people are becoming much more accepting of other Asians. And the paradise that Japan is for me is also becoming a place of acceptance for other people from other Asian countries. And that is a great change that I've seen. So I see that hopefully going into the future. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Yukari. Thank you both of you. And that's it from us here in Osaka. I'm Aki Shibuya. And I'm Shobeppu. We now go to our studio in Tokyo.